Well, I've been working on the Sagi for, uh, this would be my 28th year. I started Usagi in 1984, about the same time that the Ninja Turtles came about. I think we started roughly about even the same month. So at that time, there weren't many black and white comic books. So we gravitated towards each other. We sent each, each other fan mail, uh, words of encouragement, and we became friends that way. Yeah. You know, when we first started uh, with Usagi, there were no black. There was no black and white market to speak of. There were maybe a half a dozen successful black and white comic books: uh, Elf Quest, um, uh, Cerebus, Grendel, Mage, but uh, not a big share. It wasn't until the Ninja Turtles came about that the black and white explosion came about. And you know, I've been writing uh, on that explosion for 28 years now. Suddenly, it became popular. Everyone wanted Ninja Turtle things, and. Um, Later on, when they received their, uh, got their TV series and their merchandising, again, it was at another San Diego Comic-Con. I remember Peter and I were just sitting next to each other and he just turned to me and said, you want an Usagi toy? I said, sure. And that's how the Usagi Ninja Turtle crossovers came about. We, our collaborations were great. Peter did a, uh, a story for me and later I went to Mirage, uh, I took Usagi to Mirage Publishing. And they uh, published uh, Usagi for, I think, uh, let's see, 16 issues and a three issue Space Usagi miniseries. And I always had a great relationship with them. You know, I like to see other people's interpretations of my characters. And they, they're the same way. They like to see other artists uh, take on uh, the Ninja Turtles. I think my, my version of the Turtles tend to be friendlier <laughs> or more rounded but everyone has their own styles when Peter or Kevin have drawn Usagi uh, you know it's in their own styles and which I really love it's I like to see other people's uh, takes on Usagi I remember going to uh, this uh, animation studios and just talking to the animators who have to be fans of Usagi so that really helped and one thing we were wondering about is Usagi's voice. You know, what does Usagi sound like? And for me, Usagi doesn't really talk. However, uh, he needed to talk in the, uh, the TV series, of course. And so we discussed everything from going the complete opposite route and having Usagi speak with a Brooklyn accent or having him speak Japanese and have English subtitles at the bottom or having him dub where his mouth would move differently. But finally, we settled on a, a voice that was similar to Splinter's and a little softer. And I think it worked for that, uh, t that uh, TV series. He writes serious stories that happen to be about samurai yes. rabbits and stuff. <laughs> but they're not similar. I like true. Ninja Turtles, but they're <laughs> totally different. <laughs> so nice to see you, John. Thank, Thank you. you. That was director John Landis, Animal House, uh, Michael Werewolf in London, everything. Wonderful guy, great director.